Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here with your daily devotional. I'm going to read from a rare find. I had a fella give me a stack of books by A.W. Tozer as a gift. It was such a precious and wonderful gift. But this one's called Born After Midnight, and it was published back in 1959. A.W. Tozer, a great uh, Bible teacher, written uh, several books that you're probably familiar with, The Pursuit of God. That's probably the most well-known of his books. But uh, I've read from this one and The Root of the root of the righteous and uh, a couple of others but today he's writing about the missing witness and i was drawn in even by the title of it so i wanted to share it with you this morning one cause of the decline in the quality of religious experience among christians these days is the neglect of the doctrine of the inward witness now before you glaze over hang with me because he's actually uh, he's, yeah, I read through this and he, he kind of made me smile a couple times and I found myself both challenged and encouraged at the same time. He says, stamping our feet to start the circulation, blowing on our hands to limber them up. We've emerged shivering from the long period of the theological deep freeze, but the influence of the frosty years is still felt among us to such an extent that the words witness, experience, and feeling are cautiously avoided by the rank and file of evangelical teachers. In spite of the undeniable lukewarmness of most of us, we still fear that unless we keep a careful check on ourselves, we shall surely lose our dignity and become howling fanatics by this time next week. (laughs) Oh, that it were so. Um, We set a watch upon our emotions day and night, lest we become over-spiritual and bring reproach upon the cause of Christ. and Wouldn't want to do that. Which all, if I may say so, is for most of us about as sensible as throwing a cordon of police around a cemetery to prevent a wild political demonstration by the inhabitants. See what I mean? He's got a pretty interesting... (laughs) mind and his illustrations and imagination are just amazing. I love this era of his writing. We who hold the doctrines of the New Testament these days believe ourselves to be in direct lineal descent from the apostles and true and legitimate offspring of the early church. Well, I believe there are today some who belong to the household of God who are of the chosen generation and make up the royal priesthood and the holy nation of which Peter writes. They are found scattered among the churches where, we may as well admit, they are often a source of embarrassment to the mixed multitude that composes the membership. That much is true, but for us to assume that all evangelicals belong in the apostolic succession is to be too optimistic for our own good. So to believe suggests a disquieting parallel with those scribes and Pharisees of Jesus' day who claimed spiritual descent from Abraham because they could demonstrate that they were his physical offspring. We are Abraham's seed, they boasted. Jesus replied by making a distinction. I know that you are Abraham's seed, he told them. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. In the same way as the Pharisees, we may err gravely by assuming that we are children of God because we hold the creed of God. It most certainly does not follow. It is not physical descent that marks one a true child of Abraham, for Abraham is the father of such as have faith. And faith is not passed on by natural procreation. So it is not creedal descent that proves us to be true sons of Pentecost, but identity of spirit with them upon whose heads sat the cloven tongues like as of fire. In other words, toes are so good at this. And, uh, you know, from, a, from another era, a couple decades back, here comes a man saying it's not... It's not just about being religious. It's it's about actually um, communing with the Lord and having a living relationship with God. I love this. One distinguishing mark of those first Christians was a supernatural radiance that shined out from within them. The sun had come up in their hearts and its warmth and light made unnecessary any secondary sources of assurance. They had the inner witness and there is, of course, Uh, where he's getting his title, The Missing Witness. They had the inner 
witness, he says. <clears throat> Excuse me. They knew with an immediate awareness that required no jockeying of evidence to give them a feeling of certainty. Great power and great grace marked their lives, enabling them to rejoice to suffer shame for the name of Jesus. Mm. Uh, that's pretty challenging to think about that and to think back to their time and to think back about what a big risk it was for them to be identified with Christ. In our day and time, um, we might be mocked, we might be ridiculed, we might be you know, marginalized culturally or socially. Um, uh, the ideas of Jesus are not all that popular in a world that is so focused on self all the time. For those who follow Jesus, mm, they have uh, no longer been worshiping at the altar of autonomy because we're following instead of leading. And I fear a lot of folks these days uh, only believe in a God that they can lead instead of in a God they can follow. Mm. Wow. Anyway, this is great. He has uh, really gone on to something here. It's obvious that the average evangelical Christian today is without this radiance. The efforts of some of our teachers to cheer up our drooping spirits are futile because those same teachers reject the very phenomenon that would naturally produce joy, namely the inner witness. This is what he's talking about. In their strange fear of the religious emotions, they've explained away the scriptures that teach this witness, such as the spirit itself. Uh, the Spirit itself bears witness, and he that believes on the Son of God has the witness in himself. Well, instead of the inner witness, we now substitute logical conclusions drawn from texts. A conversation between a seeker and a worker in an inquiry room is likely to run about like this. Do you want the Lord to receive you and make you his child? Yes. Well, read this. Him that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. Do you believe that? Yes. Now, if he doesn't cast you out, what does he do? I suppose he takes me in. Amen. Now he has taken you in and you are his child. Why don't you tell others about it? So the bewildered seeker forces a wary smile and testifies that he has been converted to Christ. He's honest and means well, but he has been led astray. He has fallen victim to a spiritless logic. Such assurance as he has rests upon a shaky syllogism. There is no witness, no immediacy of knowledge, no encounter with God, no awareness of inner change. Where there is a divine act within the soul, there will always be a corresponding awareness. This act of God is self-validating. It is its own evidence and addresses itself direct to the religious consciousness. Abundant external evidence may exist that a work has been done within, and in this the reason may rejoice, but such evidence cannot be sufficient to guarantee that a saving work has been wrought. Whatever can be judged by reason is subject to the limitations and errors of reason. God waits to assure us that we are his children in a manner that eliminates the possibility of error, that is, by the inner witness. In one of the most or in one of the most triumphant hymns ever written, Arise, My Soul, Arise, by Charles Wesley, there occur these lines, quote, His spirit answers to the blood and tells me I am born of God. To the salvation by logical conclusion devotees, such language is plain heresy, Tozer says. And he closes with this, if it is heresy, I run to join such a glorious heretic, and may God send us many more. <laughs> so, if you didn't quite catch what he was saying there, um, maybe I should explain it this way. <clears throat> we can't reduce the gospel, the Christian faith, um, the experience of salvation to a mere acknowledgement of academic propositional creedal statements. Um, it's more than that. 
It's more than data in our minds. It's it's yes, it's based on doctrines and and grounded and rooted in scripture. Mm, but it becomes um, uh, transformational in the heart in such a way that we uh, uh, we ex we have experiential knowledge of God and experiential uh, witness of the Spirit within us. I hope that you have that. If you've never had that before, get on your knees along with me every single day. Get on my knees and pray, em lifting up the empty hands of faith and just asking the Lord to fill me anew each and every day uh, with His Spirit. Um, really wonderful. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you for this uh, stirring from our older brother, A.W. Tozer. Pray that, Lord, you would meet every longing heart, that part of us that just chronically dissatisfied with all the finite things around us, even though some of them are really, really great things and wonderful things, but yet we still find ourselves wanting more. And that's, Lord, because you have made us for yourself and we will be restless until we find our rest in you. Holy Spirit, um, stir each and every one of us up. Uh, bring our longing for you uh, to such a, a level, Lord, that we find ourselves once again uh, on our face before you and receiving from you that inner witness of the Spirit that Tozer was talking about. And then, Lord, change us, transform us, um, give us a clearer vision of your truth, a greater faith in your power, and a more confident assurance of your love toward us. And then send us out into the world, Lord, to be your witnesses, to share with others the good news of the gospel of Jesus. There's really true. You really do love sinners such as we are, and we are grateful. Amen and amen. Have a great day. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas. Music by Phil Kagey.